good. Welcome back to Life with Sheila, and we're not here to talk coffee. We're not here to spill tea. We're here to talk about riding, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do. I'm going to try to make this a really quick, almost a one-shot wonder, because the editing program that I use for my videos is having an issue with Google and YouTube. Because usually I can edit and then upload straight to YouTube so that I don't have to edit the video, save the video, then upload it because it will render and then automatically upload onto YouTube. So it kind of saves me a step. Means long as I get it rendering before I leave this house, usually by the time I get to work, if not soon after, it's already uploaded to YouTube and then I just do the back end stuff. But the way this week is going, there's um, an issue between Cyberlink and Google. And um, they're working on it, but ugh, it's that extra step with time. It's just patience. And we're not here to talk about editing either. And okay, let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's talk. I think um, the last time we talked about being a plotter or a prancer or a planter, um, I explained that I was more of a prancer. I liked to just write and let the chips fall where they might. <sighs> Since then, I have kind of changed the way that I look at things. Um, it started with NaNoWriMo when I was writing my Christmas novel, which is still waiting for me to come back to it, but I will start it again in July, I think is what I'm going to do. That is one that I will probably self-publish. The one I'm writing now, I might actually go through the whole process and get it queried and sent into a publisher to see how that goes. Um, I've been too afraid to do that before and you guys know my word of the year this year is fearless and so I must face all things that are fearful to me and that is one of them. So we're gonna face it. We're gonna face it together because you're gonna go on that journey with me on Wednesdays through through this year. And I was wondering, this is not my first writing video of the year. I think I did one in January, maybe two. I think I did two because you guys were giving me, um, leading the way for one of the characters in this book. And you still will be. Um, just right now I have all the information I need and I need to get it going. But with that said, I wanted to share a few things, a few tools that I use and to explain my process. I am still not 100% plot a plotter. Um, I'm not going to sit out and plot out my whole book um, detail for detail because I know that when I am writing, um, characters tend to take on a life of their own, especially when you are just freely writing and letting the words flow. Um, not one time have I sat down to write that I did not walk away from the computer completely frazzled or completely just shocked at something that a character did that I didn't plan. But as I was clickety clacketing, <laughs> excuse me, as I was clickety clacketing that day or at that moment, um, something happened and I was just floored. Um, I think it was in my dirty little secret. I think I walked away in tears a couple times because of the way a situation played out. Um, you know, there was a, a character that died and I didn't, I didn't intend for her to die, but she did. And it was very sad. <laughs> I felt like I lost one of my own children. It was terrible. Um, but I, I am now not a prancer because I, I know that I need a little bit of a guideline. Um, 
when I was writing you were more um, from the ladies of Cotton Creek series and it's only the first and I have not picked it back up because it's difficult because I did not keep track of character qualities um, there's a mosquito hawk in here <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I'm not saving you from my cat. We do not kill mosquito hawks, by the way, um, because we have so many mosquitoes and it, it's alarming that we have so many mosquito hawks out in February. Oh boy, pumpkins in the window. <laughs> All right, um, but I lost a lot of character qualities. Um, I wrote that book back in 2012, so it's been several, several years. And I'll have to actually go back and read the book and jot down notes and then be able to pick it up from where I left off because I kind of know what the next book was going to be. Um, I have those notes somewhere. I have to find them. I think I know where they are um, specifically, which is great. <clears throat> another, another story for another time. <laughs> So, when I was writing the Christmas, or starting the Christmas novel last, um, last fall, I began to do a little character mapping, and I loved it. I loved writing down my characters on paper, not on paper. I use these rolled index um, cards. I use the big ones. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, gives me a lot of writing space. But I'm able to, on one of those cards, map out this character. You know, what are the qualities? What color hair do they have? Eyes? How tall are they? What kind of build do they have? Um, do they have a certain style in their clothes? What's their personality like? What are their goals? What is the main goal for them in the story? And so it's all right there. And I usually leave a little space for extra little things that pop up because those are details you need to kind of keep track of. And then for that other one, I also had to break down family trees because there were several, uh, there was one family, but there were many parts to the family as we all know, and we all have. But when you're writing a book, you kind of have to have those bones and that's what I call them. I call them um, writing bones. Waiting for her. Good girl. I expected her to bark at the neighbor. <laughs> so I believe in planning and plotting. Shelby girl, that wasn't daddy's truck, baby. <laughs> that was Mr. Bruce next door. That wasn't daddy. That wasn't daddy. Daddy's not here. Daddy's at work. Oh. Let's see if you guys can see her. Shelby, come here. Oh, you moved. Never mind. She moved. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, I have come to the conclusion that I am a planter. <laughs> I still write by the seat of my pants, but I have a plot and part of a plan. So, I'm a planter. Um, as of right now, I have... I, um, let me show you. I don't want to show you too much, so I'm going to flip through this kind of quick, okay? So, as of right now, I have, I have a card for each character. Ha ha ha. Um, and this, uh, Willow Harris is y'all's character. And then you have, um, oh, I thought it was Miss Scarlett Davis, Rachel Taylor, and Charlotte Anderson and this is a blank um, I had done this for a friend who is also writing her first book um, but she had asked for some advice so I kind of showed her that if you want to pause the screen so that you can kind of get a glimpse of all the little details that I try to put out for each character um, I always find it flattering when someone asks me for my uh, advice and, and information when writing because it's like I feel like I'm such still a baby and a newbie. So each character 
I also have kind of put down on a quarter of a card and I kind of just put a few details, you know, what was their career, what were they doing. Um, all four of these characters went to college together, so I needed to figure out what their degrees were in. Um, that was fun. But it led to their character, which was great. Um, and each one of these live in a different part of South Carolina. Um, one will live in Charleston and there's a couple little suburbs around there that I have planted these characters where they live and each oh then I put their status whether they were married divorced single what might be and then I also add on to their um, kind of the their little conflict in the story which was great um, because it kind of gives me a little bit of information. <clears throat> now, I told you that I put their cities where they lived. So on another card, divided into four, I put the name of each town. And then I put um, kind of their location around Charleston. And then what their weather is like, um, any kind of unique thing that I could Google and find about that particular town. I kind of noted down because those are things I want to include in the story. I truly want to transform you and myself into this, this land. And since I don't have to create a world, I need to discover the world that I'm planting these characters in. Um, you know, I don't do, um, sci-fi and, and, um, I don't know what else it's called. I don't create new worlds usually. I like to write in the world that we live in now because to me I can relate to it um, more than I could to a created world. I don't get into movies like Star Wars and even The Matrix and that kind of stuff. I'll watch them but it's not my heart. It's not my what I love. So I don't write things that I don't love, right? right? <laughs> it's kind of like, why would you waste time on not doing something you don't love? That's why I do YouTube. That's why I took a break because I needed to figure out what it is that I really want to do. So then, you know, this book is kind of broke down to 27 chapters. It's three acts, nine blocks, and in each block has three chapters. So those are the like the the gritty details. Then you kind of break it into um, break it into little little chunks, and then I write that. Um, but I'm telling you, I really don't put a whole lot of detail down. I kind of know what my focus point is for that chapter um, and what that block is looking like. I'm kind of using save the cat kind of method, but not really. Um, because I think to write authentically, you have to let go of rules at some point. And that is my, that is my desire. Right now I have planned out the first, and when I say plan, I tell you, I just know what the, the main event <laughs> that's gonna happen in that chapter. So the first six. Uh, my goal was to have the first um, act done, at least planned, before I started writing. But I need to see how these first sticks go first. I need to um, figure out the the rhythm, and um, it's still in its it's it's still in its creation process. So that is how I am starting. That is what I am doing, and. I will work a little bit more today, possibly figuring out those next three chapters, which will be the first third of the book, and then I will begin writing. I don't want to plan out the whole story quite yet. I might get an idea. Um, I'm, I might seriously look at my, my chart. Um, I think I have it in here. see this is kind of like act one act two act three kind of what should occur in each um chapter 
<laughs> so I have that in, of course, one of my Erin Condra notebooks, um, which is great. Oh, look, you saw my ring light there. <laughs> I use this book. I take it with me everywhere I go. I take this with me everywhere I go. You'll see each little clip that I have. Um, I always keep the character, the characters and their cities and um, that other little card with a little more information about each one attached together. And then I have Act 1, Act 2, Act 2, no, I have Act 1. I'm so silly. I wrote Act 2. I have Act 1, Block 1, which is the first three chapters. Let me show you what I did. I don't want to show you my whole thing, though, because I, I, I want you to read the book. Um, so, Act 1, Block 1. 1, 2, 3. Okay? Yes, I went fast on purpose. That kind of just gives me a gist. Then I break them down. And... The first chapter is introductions of each character. I am going to let them introduce themselves. I have not written in first person in a long time, so this will be fun. Um, so they will get to introduce themselves from their viewpoint, which will be quite interesting when you get into reading and actually create your own viewpoint of these characters. You know, first impressions are quite the thing. <laughs> and then, of course, um, I did the same thing for Act 1, Block 1, Chapter 2, and Act 1, Block 1, Chapter 3, and I just kind of mind map it all the same way I did the characters, um, just because that's how my mind works. I love mind mapping. I have a video on mind mapping, um, not for writing, just for setting goals. Um, I've used it for videos before. Do I have all this together right? Yes, I do. All right, so right now that is my current writing process. I know I really didn't show you physically a whole lot. I don't want to just because, um, like I said, I would like you to read the whole book. <laughs> <coughs> In this notebook though, in the front, I never put my name, but I am using um, this to kind of jot down other ideas that come up. I'm constantly having story ideas. In fact, I need to write one down that happened as soon as I get out of the shower. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh sorry, I was reading. And then I have a spot for future story settings. And I do that when I hear names of towns and um, areas that sound intriguing or are hilariously contradicting to a story just because, you know, humor is everything. <laughs> and that is that, my friends. That is my current writing process. I am officially a planter. Um, I have moved from prancing. I'm not quite to 100% plotting and I probably never will be. Um, I know there are many people who are, I don't like the problem. The problem is I did a lot of plotting for, um, the book I was writing in November, the Christmas novel, and the story took a different turn. Um, and I felt blocked and I don't want to feel blocked when I'm writing. And so I think by planning too much, we block ourselves, um, creatively so I don't want to block that so I'm trying to plan loosely very loosely and we shall see how this goes um, my goal is to finish maybe um, outlining today and then I'm gonna start writing I'm ready to go I'm ready to start because I cannot wait um, I cannot wait to dive in so this will be a journey. This is their year long journey that I hope to complete in about four months, March, April, May, June. That's perfect timing. And I would like to actually send it off. Um, I'd like to 
send it to a publisher, um, at least the synopsis part, just um, see what can happen. It's a matter of finding the right publisher for you. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I love the self-publishing process. And I might go that route. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm not worried about that right now. If you're a new writer or if you're wanting to try your hand at writing, I encourage you and urge you do not... Um, worry about the, those details from the beginning. It's not worth it. Um, it's just my theory. Just start writing. I will see you guys in the next video. Tomorrow I think I'm going to share some of my new current favorite lifestyle products that I have found that I love. Um, there's a beauty product, um, some light reading, and a few other things I'd like to share that I have around my house. Um, it will be not a 20 minute video, so. <laughs> All right, if you are a writing friend like me, get to writing. If not, then, you know, I would love to know who your favorite author is and what are you reading right now? Leave that down in the comments below for me um, because I am working on my um, TBR list uh, for the rest of the year. I have one book on my Kindle I need to finish, and then um, I, I downloaded another one. I'm really not 100% sold on it, but um, and I also have some Audible books that I'm wanting to listen to as well. So if you happen to be an Audible or an audiobook lover too, then definitely leave that down below because, um, you know, reading is great. Leaders are readers, and readers are leaders. So if you're not reading, you're not leading. Um, and if you're not leading, it's because you're not reading. Think about that. If you're not going somewhere in your life that you want to go and you get stuck all the time, pick up a book, start reading. I don't care what kind of book it is. Read, read. Reading is good for you. Reading is good for you just like water is. Bye.